Let's look at AI characters in CapCut. I've got some of my AI character friends to help me out with this video. Take a look. I wasn't going to make a video today, but since I'm not real, I don't get a choice. Bob dragged me out here and told me we have to talk about some stuff in CapCut. So let's get this over with so I can go back to bed. That, of course, is one of the AI characters in CapCut. And to create him, we start up in the media panel, go all the way over to the right, click these two little arrows till you get to AI characters, and click the AI characters icon. Now you can also get to AI characters from the properties, but remember, for the most part in CapCut, when you want to add something, it's over on the left in the media panel, or sometimes the materials panel it's called. And then if you want to change something, you do it in the properties panel over on the right. So if we had text selected, we would have an option for AI characters up here in the text. But we're going to start by adding an AI character and providing it a script in from the media panel. So I'll paste in the script that I want my AI character to say. I've already copied that to my clipboard, so I'll just paste that in. And then you can browse through the characters under this appearance area. We have a handful of characters to pick from, and most of them, they will have a single character that's in multiple different poses. This is the fella I use here. We'll click him. Hey, good to see you. Uh, he just shows up as transparent with no background. The reason he's showing up on that background is because of where I have my playhead. We put in our script. We've selected this as our character, and we'll scroll down here a little bit more, and we need to pick a voice. So we have the whole selection of voices here to pick from in CapCut, and I just need to remember which one I used for him. I wasn't going to make a video today. All right, that's our voice. You can choose to frame it if you want, which is really just masking it. The full body is like the whole thing. You can mask that down to be a half. Hey, good to see you. In our case, none of those make sense for what we're doing here, so we're just gonna leave that on full body. You can either pick a color or choose one of these background images that they have populated in here but you don't have to use one of these backgrounds. I'm gonna do my background separate from the AI character, so we'll get to that in just a second. We put in the script, we've chosen the AI character that we want, picked the voice. We don't want a frame, we don't want a background, so we're just gonna hit add, and there it drops our guy on. Now it's also gonna automatically create captions, and if you don't want captions, you don't have to use those. You can just grab those guys here, and delete and make them go away and it won't affect anything with your character. He's right here ready to go. I've got this background here and the background is just a stock image that I took into Leonardo AI and used Leonardo's canvas to doctor up this stock image a little bit. I had a vision in my head for what I was going to do here and none of the stock images were cutting it. Everything I found that was similar to this, it was all just perfectly clean, unlived in museum mansion looking things that didn't look like a human being had ever stepped foot in there. And that's not really what I was going for. So I used Leonardo's canvas editor and I added in the backpack and some shoes over here and under there and put a little uh, game system or something on the table, threw some coats up on the wall, changed out the uncomfortable looking piece of furniture they had sitting here and threw in a comfy sectional sofa and then under the bar they had some ultra modern bar stools so I got rid of those and put in something that looked a little bit more normal and some of this is going to get covered up by our character and I'm okay with that so I'm going to slide this over so that it lines up underneath our character for the whole time that he's on and I'll play through what it just created I wasn't going to make a video today but since I'm not real I don't get a choice Bob dragged me out here and told me we have to talk about some stuff in CapCut. So let's get this over with so I can go back to bed. The first thing I see is because of his size here, this is one of the shots of the AI characters. It kind of looks like they're, you know, taking a selfie recording on a phone or whatever. So his arm would be up holding the phone where its position just doesn't work at all. So I want to drag that over. I'm going to put it up against the edge so that it now makes a little more sense. And something else that I didn't like is the hand gestures. Sometimes he's punctuating a word by putting his hand out. And I don't know, it just seemed a little bit off to me. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to make him a little, a good bit bigger actually. 
And I'm going to drag him down here, make sure I've got this edge lined up. And I'll put him something like that. Yeah. And that way we'll sort of see the movement. We'll know that he's talking with his hands, but we won't be distracted by those odd punctuations. And lastly, something that I did to liven him up in what I showed you in the beginning is because it looks to me like this is somebody shooting a selfie, holding the phone out from the hand, I would expect there to be a little bit of camera movement there. What we can do is come up here to effects in the media menu, and I'm going to search for something, uh, I don't know, a shake or camera movement, something like that. Uh, that seems a little bit much. All right, there's a nice subtle movement. That's probably what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for anything crazy. What I'm trying to do is add an effect to make it look natural, not make it look edited. So I think we'll go with this one, this camera shake. Just drop that one down. I don't want this across the whole thing. So let's drag it down. Come on down there, fellow. Let's get you closer so we can see what we're doing here. I probably want this really, really small, and I'm going to duplicate it a few times. So let's start with this, see what we've got. We're set on a range of 15 and a speed of 33. I'm going to go ahead and mute him so we're not hearing it over and over. All right, I'd like that to be a lot more subtle, so I'm going to take that speed down to, let's say, 5. So that gave us a little jiggle there at the beginning. That makes sense. That would probably be accurate. I'm going to copy that, and then let's move forward. Let's find another spot. Here's where he's moving his hand a lot and his shoulder. So let's go ahead and drop a copy of that on there. We'll just paste it down. This one, I'm going to take the speed down a little bit. Take it down to 1, and let's take the range to 10. Range is how far it's going to shake, and then speed is how fast it's going to shake. Let's go ahead and make that one just a little bit shorter. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come down a little bit further. Maybe find another spot where there's some movement. Yeah, it looks like right about there we've got some. I was not a perfectionist with this, and that seemed to work out okay the last time. So maybe I'll take the speed up to 2 on this one, and just bring the range down to 5. That looked like uh, pretty good there. Maybe we'll drop another one in here. We'll leave the speed at 1 on that one, and range at 7, and maybe one more at the end. Yeah, and I don't want to spend forever on this, but I do want to see if we can try and make it just look a little bit more like it was actually shot by a real person. So now let's go through. And I think those just add something to it. You probably wouldn't even notice them if I wasn't showing them to you. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want it to stand out. I want it to help the whole clip to not stand out. Some of these AI characters have a walking style. Good to see you. So if they're walking towards you, that could create an issue if you have them on a static background. So let's have one of the AI characters demonstrate. You can see my legs moving like I'm walking toward the camera. To make this look more realistic, slowly scale down the background. So you see there, it looks like she's walking in place if we don't do something with this. So we've got two options. I think, to try and make this look more natural and realistic. And the first one is we can make the background just get a little smaller and a little smaller as the clip goes on. So to do that, I'm going to go to this background here. This was a clip that I got from the CapCut Stock Media Library. I did apply a filter to it, and the filter I used was Vivid 2, and that uh, just kind of brightened up the background a little bit. It was just a little dull, so by applying that Vivid 2, it made it really punch up. Now let's make the illusion that she's actually walking toward us. They've done the hard work by making her legs move. So with my background selected, I need it to get smaller. So I need to start it out bigger so that it can scale down and not get too small. Because if I start here at 100% and I scale it down by the end of the video, I'm going to have this black border around it, and I don't want that. So with the background video selected, I'm going to come over under Video in the Properties panel. I'm on Basic. That's where it should default to for you. I'm going to find scale. Next to that, I'm going to click the add keyframe button and I'm going to take this up to 125%. And that'll give me plenty of room to shrink it down and still not end up with a black frame. So I'll come all the way to the end here, click keyframe again, bring this down, and I think I'm going to bring it down to about 105. I want to leave a little bit of wiggle room in case I need to adjust it or something. 
So let's say 105 and see how that looks. You can see my legs moving like I'm walking toward the camera. To make this look more realistic, slowly scale down the background. All right, that looked pretty good. So the effect that that gives is as though someone is in front of her walking backward, holding a camera. So the person holding the camera walking backward and her, the subject, are both moving. And as they're moving, then the background gets a little bit smaller and moves. They're moving past each thing in the background. That might have been a little bit too much. We could probably stand to come back to this keyframe at the end, just click on it. And instead of 105, we can move that up and maybe make it 110, maybe even 115. You can see my legs moving like I'm walking toward the camera. To make this look more realistic, slowly scale down the background. If you wanted to get super technical with that, you could always come through and chop this clip up a bunch, put different keyframes in and have it move more when she's taking a step and then have a subtle pause. But that seems like way too much work. So I'm not going to do all that. Now, another way to do this instead of moving the background would be to move the subject. So if the camera is in a fixed position, there's not somebody walking backward in front of her, but the camera's just sitting there on a tripod, then what you would expect to happen here is as she gets closer to you, she's walking toward you, she should appear to be a little bit larger. So for this, I'm not worried about the background, but I'm going to select her and I'm going to come to the beginning of the clip, hit the keyframe for the transform group. That way I'll be keyframing the scale and the position and these other things at the same time. I'm not really worried about the rotation. We're not going to do anything with that, but we may end up adjusting the position a little bit. Add keyframe on transform. You'll notice on the timeline it's applied. Go ahead and come to the end and do the same thing. And now what I want to happen for her is if she's 100% there at the end, let's probably take that up, make it more like 110. Then we'll go back to the beginning. She's at 100. Eh, we might want her a little more like 95-ish. And I don't want to just start her at 100 and then have her get bigger and bigger because if she's walking for too long there, I, I would end up with her being, you know, bigger than the canvas. And that would be crazy. I mean, we're not trying to make a monster movie here, unless you are. All right, let's see what that looked like. I went ahead and muted this track so we don't have to listen to it again. That's pretty good. We don't want to notice that she's getting bigger. We just want our eyes and our brain to check the box that it's normal and not really think anything of it. You could probably go a little bit more with that one. Instead of the 95 and 110, maybe we come back here and start her off at 90%. Let's see how that looks. When she's walking towards you, it feels like she's getting taller because, of course, she is. We've we've scaled up, and you can see that if we select the layer that she's on and go this way, you can see the white box is getting bigger both above and below the canvas. So that seems like it's too much. Another thing you can do, since we went ahead and selected the transform keyframe at the beginning and at the end, we've already set a keyframe on the position as well. So her starting position there is at minus 111, and then the ending position is at minus 100. Let's go ahead and take that down to minus 111. It's a subtle difference, probably not necessary, but let's take a look anyway. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better for me. It doesn't look like she's towering over us as she approaches. It looks more like a straight shot. Those are a couple of examples of AI characters in CapCut. You might have noticed that AI characters and AI avatars in general are built in like a presentation style. They're not necessarily built as actors in a scene, but they're built as they're presenting. And so I've tried to humanize that a little bit more so that they look less like your typical standard AI characters. CapCut does have a few things going on. They have the walking AI avatar, so that gives us the option to like put her in this outdoor background which is a little bit different than standing on a stage or in front of a dry erase board or something like that, looking like the typical AI presenter. They also give us a bunch of them that look like they are, you know, taking the video themselves with their arm extended doing the selfie kind of thing, which is pretty cool. So I try to mix it up a little bit. Also, like with this fellow, when we did this one, 
I wanted to go right into the fact that he's an AI character and try and have some, you know, maybe some interaction between my human self and the AI character there. Acknowledge that it's an AI character. I'm not trying to fool anybody here. I don't think it does. But of course, I do want to make it as immersive as possible so that even if it is AI, it's fun to watch. I hope you found this helpful, and if there's something else in CapCut or any other creator tool that you'd like to know how to do, please let me know. Leave a comment. I'm always looking for ideas of new videos that I can make that are something that you're looking for. If you don't have CapCut yet, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link, which means I may receive a small commission if you end up purchasing something. You don't have to. Hey, go try the free. It might do everything you need. And I certainly appreciate it when folks do use my affiliate links. If you want to keep going exploring with me, watch this video right here.